New Year. Like seeing those drinks and the gifts and the chest Christmas. Well, I want to wish you a happy New Year. But we are. So it's good to have you here. There I am. Okay, so uh, do I have to do that all over again? <laughs> Hope you had a great Christmas yesterday and that the Lord blessed your house and your celebration as we celebrated together around the world with uh, the, the birth of Jesus. As we start today, we are going to focus on the new year and the plans for the new year. So let's stand up and let's still sing our Christmas carol because we've got lots to do. <laughs>
37 says, For nothing is impossible with God. Amen. He created a way for each one of us to have the opportunity to spend eternity with Him. 
So it's simply our choice. What are we going to do? We've made our choices. Many of us have. If anyone has it, it's a good time to do it. Let's just focus on what Jesus has done for us. So God the Father put into motion all the way back to Genesis. Great and glorious Heavenly Father. Lord God, we come before you to thank you for your glorious plan. For everything that you've done, Lord, that has brought each one of us the opportunity to make a choice. To see Jesus as our Savior, or to deny him. Thank you for giving us the choice. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Each of you should have a cup. Bread on one side and juice on the other. And what Jesus did the Last Supper was to say, this is my body. Eat. And at the end of the supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and said, this is my blood. Given for you. For the sins of all mankind. Father, we pray that each one of us has the wisdom to choose you, to say, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, our Savior, our Redeemer, our God.
unconscious love of Christmas and what the real meaning of it is. Oh my goodness, it's so cold outside. I don't know what to do. Well, oh, I'm sure glad those ginger folks aren't here today. Last time I came to the service, they, they, they told me to sit way right back there. Out of the way, like I smell or something. I just, I just didn't know what to do. And, and then after the sort of one of the church ladies came up to me and said, Why, Martha, how nice to see you. Are you well? Are you eating right? Are you able to sleep warm at night? Now, you know, we support the soup kitchen way down the street. Why don't you go down there and get yourself something warm to eat? Then she tossed her fur over her shoulder and said, Now, you have a Merry Christmas. Oh, that didn't make me feel very good, but I don't have to tell you because you saw it all. And besides, I didn't come here to complain. Even though it's a day late, I came to celebrate your birthday. I said, Thank you. Let me get up here where there's a proper distance to thank you in your house. It's like up here where oh, I can see all the beautiful decorations and everything. Oh, yes. Speak of thank you. I'd like to thank you for, for all my blessings and, and for all my friends down at the shelter and for the scarf they gave me. It keeps me really warm. Oh, and I brought you a present. Been collecting pop cans that save money to buy it. It's a rose, a red rose. I chose this because of the deep red petals remind me of your precious blood and how you saved me from my sin. The thorns remind me of that awful crown of thorns that you wore on your head and how you suffer for me. Oh, the fragrance. It helps me remember your precious Holy Spirit you gave to me to be my helper and comforter. And the whole thing makes me realize that life down here on earth is just not going to be a bed of roses. But you're always there and you never change. Well, I'm just going to lay this rose down right here. You can enjoy it later when you're not quite so busy. Now, I don't know how you celebrate birthdays up there in heaven, Lord. But down here, we have cake and candles. We sing the happy birthday song and we make a wish and we blow out the candles. And I brought you your very own birthday cake. It's chocolate. That's my favorite. Frosting really roll, but you know, that's the best part. So close your eyes, Lord, and don't open until I tell you to. You got your eyes closed, Lord? Because old ladies were slow. Okay, you can open your eyes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, sweet Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Now make a wish and blow out the candle. What was that? Oh, sure, I'll help you with that. I wonder what you wished for. Did you wish we'd all talk to you more often or that we more faithful and or maybe, maybe you wish we all love our neighbor as ourselves. Well, Lord, I better get going. This is going to be another service here. And I don't want them churchy folks to find me here. They think I'd be stealing or something. Oh, good night, Lord. Thank you so much for your blessings. And I want to just tell you happy birthday with all my love and gratitude.
gracious, mighty God in heaven, I thank you so much for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And help us not to be churchy people, but Christians devoted to you. In seeing those who have the most need and reaching out and touching their lives and loving them, Father God. We pray for those in our church family that are struggling with their health. We ask that you would bless them. So many have been are, are doing so well in their age, uh, Father. We are amazed at how well they're doing. Uh, and we are encouraged by their continuous attendance, even though uh, they are having extreme aches and pains. Bless them, Father. And Father, for those who are struggling with uh, sorrow and grief because of loss of loved ones this last year recently, uh, maybe this time of year really reminds them of what they had and now they're gone. We pray for uh, Aldine, we pray for Joan, we pray for Heidi, we pray for Irene and Bob. I hope all of these people have lost loved ones just recently. We pray for comfort and strength. We pray for those who are struggling financially, those who have lost jobs and joyfully got them back again recently with like Brenda and Pat. Others, Father God, and we also pray for those who are struggling financially, uh, for Marcella specifically, and the needs that she has, Father God. Hey, Paul is leaving us this week. And, uh, we're praying that he would have a, a safe trip down to to the university and uh, a great year at the university. We'll be missing him and we'll look forward to his return. Thank you so much for each one who is here today. Help us to unite in love, to encourage one another and bless each other every day as we see each other. Miss each other when we don't see each other and enjoy the reunion each Lord's Day as we get together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, get together to celebrate uh, your word and your instructions. Help us to look forward to the great things. Keep our eye on the future. So much so that we're not distracted by all the things that go on around us, the hurts, the aches, the pains, the struggles. Bless each one, Father God, and as we turn our attention to your word, let it speak to us. Let it inspire us. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're about to turn the pages of the calendar one more time. Actually, we're going to jump one calendar and open up a new one. 2022, did you ever think you would see that year? <laughs> I gotta say, I, I did not, as a child, I did not think 2022 was a possibility, or even 2020. But we made it through all those years, and now we're here in 2022. What wonderful thing are you gonna do with those 365 days that are coming around again? What wonderful thing would you be able to do with all that time God has given you? Will we do as a group? How will we be able to impact each other? How will we be able to impact our community? We clock time, so it is so important to us. So our question we have is how to have a good year. Uh, every year, do you have a good year? How many had a good year this last year? Would you say, this was a good year? Good, good, good. Uh, how many said, boy, this is the worst year ever? <laughs> Let's take a look at Proverbs. Now, Proverbs is an interesting book in the Bible because it's a collection of thoughts of a couple of of different men, wise men, led by God. 
And so we turn to the, the book of Proverbs and we find all kinds of scattered thoughts and one minute they're talking about wisdom, another thing about uh, not about riches, and another thing about all oh, back to wisdom again, and back and forth we're going through, and who the right woman is to live with, and who the right man is to live with, and how you treat each other, and all that kind of stuff. But it's in spots. You can't say, okay, this chapter is dealing with this, and this chapter is dealing with this. You go through every every chapter, and there's little thoughts here, little thoughts there, and you say, oh, what all is it saying? I, I don't catch it. Um, so let's take a look at just the three little verses in uh, Proverbs 17 that might guide us to how to have a good year. And if we can have a good year every year, we will have a good life, right? So let's take a look at that. Proverbs 17, 22 through 24. And um, read it together. A cheerful heart is goodness, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Are you with me? Let's try that again. I want to hear your voices. Say this out loud, okay? A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked accept bribes in secret to pervert the course of justice. A discerning person keeps wisdom in view but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. Okay, so let's pull each one of those verses. Whoa, what happened there? I guess the computer didn't want me to have the, oh yeah, the book. Blew by kind of quickly. Uh, the, the instructions that we get for this You have to be a light touch with that. The one. power that be does not want me to make this first point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The thing about a cheerful heart is that it's so easy to be bad or sad and find all the bad, to see all the bad, and therefore just be grouchy all the time. Right? It's easy to wake up in the morning and say, oh, another terrible day. Oh, it's a Monday, a Monday. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. We sing along with whoever that was that sang. <coughs> Carpenter Girl, anyway. <sighs> Bad days are easy to see. Easy to go. So uh, we look around us and we see these bad things, and so we have a bad day. We have we wake up grumpy, we had a bad night, we wake up grumpy. It's so easy to see bad and to see the bad things that we can't, we, it's so hard to be joyful. You understand that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you ever tried to be joyful while standing and waiting for a picture to be taken? They tell you you have to smile. Impossible. Your eyes don't look like your mouth is showing. Right? Unless you catch me naturally, that's pretty hard. And we know that because uh, um, actors, actors would much rather be bad people than good people. Because good people, you have to always be smiling and happy and look like that. Bad people, you can be grouch or grump or just stand, stare, uh, starkly stare. That's okay. So the thing is, we have to decide to be joyful. That command that he gives us, or that suggestion that he makes here, is that we are... Um, the, that joy is, helps us get through, that good spirits help us get through, that weariness and struggle helps us, dries up the bones. And kind of, kind of see that. So the first thing we need to know is that, first of all, let's face it, it's a hard thing to do, but the way you do it is by deciding to do it. You decide. 
decide to be joyful. You decide that things that go bad aren't going to capitalize your day. Aren't going to make sure that you're that you're um, that you're down and you're grumpy when you see your co-workers and friends and they say, get out of the way, Chuck's coming. Not the way it's supposed to be. So you have to work at seeing the beauty that's around you. Work at seeing the good that's around you. Work at seeing uh, the smallest thing that catches you and can make you say, wow, that's amazing. How often do you just sit around, stand around, look around, take a little walk, and really observe the nature of your thing. The beauty of the sky and the different hues of blue. The birds that fly by. Do you just marvel at that? I, I, and you have to do it every, all the time, you know, because it becomes mundane. Or do you run out of the house when it's a full moon and say, I want to see what the full moon looks like. It's full moon tonight. Let's go out and look at the silvery moon. Of course, the only thing you can see around here is the full moon because the stars are gone. They, they, California has no stars. <laughs> Can't find them. Because of the ambient light, of course. But you run out and you say, hey, that's a beautiful silvery moon that's shining down. Or hey, what about the dark of the new moon and all the mystery that's in that. I'm not saying that bad things happen, you don't notice them. I'm saying that we have to make a purpose to, to notice the good things, to notice the beautiful things, to notice the, the grace of God everywhere around us. To watch a little kid walking to school, tripping by your, your uh, kitchen window and wondering what are they thinking about today? Are they excited about the day? Are they grumpy? Are they, what kind of day are they already having? And, uh, maybe a little girl, a little boy walks by and, and the little boy is dragging her along and she's just stopping to look at the roses and the flowers and being all scattered, coaching a soccer team and watching the different, different way all the little kids play the game. Some don't. They sit down in the field and pull flowers. You get kicked out of that or do you get frustrated? <laughs> Why can't you stand up and play the game? It's only five more minutes. Do it. Stand up. Work at seeing the beauty around us. Let's make that our desire this year. We're going to have a good year. Let's work at being happy, joyful, and looking at all the good that surrounds us. That will guarantee a better year. Also, search the scripture for joy. You all know what a concordance is, right? Mm -hmm. A concordance is a, a book that has a list of all the scriptures. That are there. there are two specific ones. Well, there are three. Prudence, which is a small and rich one. Then there's uh, Young's Analytical and Strong's uh, Exhausted. There we go. I lost that word. Strong's exhausted. Those three books. Those three books. Any one of them has lists of all the scriptures. Say you want to look up all the scriptures under joy. So you look at it, look up the word joy, and then there are scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture about joy. The same for uh, peace. Scripture after scripture after scripture about. You can make a study, a word study, just taking that word and looking how many different ways and how God talks about them. And some Bibles have them in the back. Where you can just open up and say, okay, I want to read all about peace or all about joy. And uh, you do a little study on your own to say, look, I don't need Chuck to tell me what joy is. I can look at the Bible and read it, and I can find the search the scripture for joy. Who has joy? Joy, rejoice, and, and uh, happiness. And take a look at those, those words and let it affect me. See how God 
sees joy in our lives. So search the scripture for joys. Search the world, the natural world around us for joys. Sometimes you might have to read books that help you understand how it is that we're laid out in this. We're put in the perfect spot. The earth can't be moved a quarter of an inch without ruining what we are. The, 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 the planets that are placed all around us make it possible for the earth to have life on it. The sun that we have makes it possible for other for our humans to exist. The moon and its place on you can start getting and going as far out as you want to do about all the, the universe that God has created. And you can see the beauty and the, and the way God works, the grace of God, and you can have joy even though bad things are happening around. Don't have to focus on the bad things. I'm not asking you to be Pollyanna. You know, where you all look for the good and the bad. There is good even though there is bad. So look for the good instead of the bad. Look for the grace instead of the hatred. Don't let the world affect you negatively. Because you can't. It, that's the devil's job, making you miserable. That's what he desired to do every day. So you wake up feeling grumpy. You're making the devil happy. Don't do that. So he's saying, decide to be joyful. First way to make that good, have a good year is to decide to be joyful all year long. 365 days of a cheery chuck. Might get sickening, but try it out. Right? Then he says, Resist the temptation to get by, to sneak by in life with this. The wicked accept bribes and the secret uh, to pervert the course of justice. The wicked accept bribes in secret to pervert the course of justice. Why do we always want to try to get by with the least possible thing? Now, I was a, a camp counselor a lot of my life. Um, Growing up my teenage years, I'd be going to camps and early 20s going to camps and going around. And, and I would be telling kids, you know, I was in charge of kids. Maybe I was in charge of the swimming area, sometimes in the lake, sometimes in a pool. But there was the deep end and there was the shallow end. There was a end roped off, the area roped off. Always, I said, kids, stay away from, don't go past the court. Sometimes they would just all huddle over by the cord. Why? You know, there's all this area of swimming, but they all hang around the cord. Why? Because they think, oh, I can just sneak by. And, and uh, they knew that they would be kicked out of the pool if I, if I saw them on the other side. So they would be on one side and then reach their hand over, hi, Chuck, hi, Chuck. <laughs> Goofy, why do we crawl the line? Why do we ask the police, what is it when you really pick me up? At 65, 66, 67, how fast can I go and get by with it? We're also relieved in California. They kind of keep up with the traffic, and that's okay. But you're danger to people if you're going the speed limit, and everyone else is buzzing by you at 80 miles an hour. Whew, I get to go faster because of California's laws. <laughs> anyway, um, don't try to get try to sneak by. The, Jesus tells a parable of a uh, farmer. In Luke, the chapter, the 12th chapter, he tells us a parable of the farmer. Remember that parable? The foolish farmer. How he actually got, uh, had a great year, abundance, so much so that he could see himself putting aside all his grain and all the things that he produced and to hide it and then sell it out a little bit of time and live peacefully every day never having to work again. But the problem with that was that he was only thinking about himself. He 
was only, he was wrapped up in himself, and he didn't see God in any of it. How do you see God? Do you see God in, in all the money you make, in all the work that you do? Because if you do, you're not going to try to sneak by. You're not going to try to get by like the, oh, I'm just going to spill this and just relax in, in luxury. So instead of sneaky Pete there, don't write that down. Put down foolish farmer, okay, in that little spot. The foolish farmer, because sneaky Pete comes up in a, in a bit. I got I got confused for Dale. So, uh, so we'll put sneaky Pete down in the next line, uh, just as an illustration. But right now it's the foolish farmer that you, you write down in the blanks there. Foolish farmer doesn't take thought of anyone else or anything else that sees his life and the impact of his life. If you do that, you're going to be very sad because everybody else is doing that. Nobody is thinking, let's make sure everything's fine for Chuck. Let's make sure Chuck is really having life easy. If I'm all wrapped up in myself and I'm not thinking about anyone else like, like um, the lady that came in here and talked to us calling us churchy people. We see her and we say, hey, how can I make your life easier? What can I do to make it better for you? Then, you know what? I'll be doing better. I'll have a better year. Not thinking about myself, but thinking about others in need. Not trying to get by, but trying to glorify, okay? So let's go on here and uh, take a look at the uh, where I would put Sneaky Pete now. Don't be Ananias and Sapphira or a Sneaky Pete. Because they, uh, in the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, their story is that they saw people getting praise for doing wonderful things, and they said, I want that myself. I want those wonderful things myself. I did turn on my... There it is. Could you all hear? Do I have to start all over again? <laughs> oh, okay. Good. <laughs> anyway, um, they saw guys getting praise for selling property and giving it to church, giving them big lumps of money, and they said, I would like that myself. So let's go. Oh, wait a minute. I want some of that money myself. Oh, for myself. I want some of that money myself. So they sold their property. We know the story. They kept some back. And then they went to the apostles and said, here's all the money we got from the property. Now they were trying to sneak by. You know what Sneaky Pete is? You know where we got that name, Sneaky Pete? Sneaky Pete is uh, what happened during the Oh, when they stopped selling drinks. I might put that on the screen here. Let me try that. There. Okay? Yeah. You got me? Okay. Um, so Sneaky Pete was what they called alcohol that people hid in their little places because there was prohibition. They were not supposed to have alcohol. So they hid the Sneaky Pete. And uh, then it would uh, cause problems because if they got caught, it would be, you know, they'd go to jail for it. And so they would sneak a little bit behind and try to say, no, I'm not making any. So don't be a sneaky beat, though. Try to get by with little things. Try to get by with uh, getting credit for something you didn't do. In fact, what you need to do is due diligence. Do the best that you can everywhere you go. You want a good year? Feel good about all the work you put into whatever you're doing. Reminds me of Joseph. And the story of Joseph. His brother sold him into slavery. He ended up in a man made up at, a, at Potiphar's house, working for Potiphar. And did he sit around moaning, oh, I'm a slave. God, what have you done with me? And sit around 
No, he threw himself into the job so much so that the that Potiphar kept making him, giving him more work and more responsibility and more uh, giving him more opportunities in life. You throw yourself into work, you give it due diligence, and God will bless that. So many people want to get by. I remember talking uh, while I was uh, while I was going to college. I was earning my room and board by working for the college, um, cleaning up the classrooms and the bathrooms and all that. And I was working with a, another guy doing all this, and he was saying, you know, don't, you don't have to do it perfect. Come on, just you know, don't, don't do it all just perfectly. Just do it quickly so we can get done. We can go out and do other things. No, you do it really perfectly while you're doing it and you meet the, the requirements and more and you actually enjoy work more. You look forward to probably some of the accolades you might hear, you know, hey, did you see how clean the bathrooms were? There wasn't a speck of dirt on the floor. We could almost eat out the mat. How come that is? Oh, Chuck's the, ch Chuck's the, the um, janitor. He's taking good care of us. A nice little slap on the back, making me want to work a little harder next time, right? So give due diligence to the work that you do. Don't sit around being miserable about going to work on Monday. Thank God that you have the work. And there are several people here who have experienced not having work. Give due diligence. So the first thing you need to do is decide to be joyful. The next thing is resist the temptation to get by and give due dil diligence instead to the work that you're doing. The next thing you can do to have uh, a good year is to keep focused on the goal. What is the goal? Well, we'll talk about that. A discerning person keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eye wander to the ends of the earth. How many of you have cell phones? Smartphones. Smartphones. <laughs> Smartphones. That's, that's the one where the screen comes on and gives you all kinds of entertainment. And if you look at one, and if you push one button, it will tell you how much time you, how much face time you have on that. How, how often that screen, uh, you were looking at that stuff on that screen. Or you can Look at the TV. The world is catch your attention all over the place. People, I see people who have two minutes waiting something. The first thing they do is pull out their phone and look. People sitting at, at aren't they aren't they annoying? Those people sitting at traffic lights ahead of you, you see their head down like this. Halfway through the green light, you finally decide to lay on the horn. Ah, they take off, you don't get through. <laughs> Stupid people ruin a day. But they constantly have to entertain themselves. Have you ever just sat quietly instead of pulling out your phone? Instead of turning off the TV? Have you all watched the TV screen of God Universe once again? I'll go back. So don't get distracted by all the things around you in this world. Because it can drag you down and turn you away and turn you out and, and cause all the, you're always worrying about something, whether it's worrying about what's happening to you or worrying about the, what's going to happen in the future or worrying about who the president is or worrying about what the Congress is going to do. Don't get distracted. You've got one thing to pick, focus on. Your goal, your goal. The duty of all mankind, says, he, uh, says he, uh, the preacher in Ecclesiastes, that would be Solomon. The duty is now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of all matters. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of mankind. Micah says it another way. He says, these things God has shown you that you need to do. Walk justly, 
Be merciful and walk humbly with your God. Keep that in mind, and you will be fine. So the duty of all mankind is to please God and keep his commands. Every human being is to do that. But specifically, you as a Christian should be doing that. You as a devotee of Jesus. You as a follower of God. Like Paul said in Philippians, the third chapter, not that I've already attained all this, or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ has told me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Can you imagine? Paul doesn't think he would, he was, he got a hold of that goal. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. If we have our eyes only set on pleasing God and doing His will, if we have our eyes set on the day we get to walk into heaven with Jesus and that becomes our focus, then nothing can shake us. All the world can fall down around us. But our minds and our hearts are set on God. We'll have a better year. So do you want a good year? These things are things you need to do. Decide to be joined. Resist the temptation to get by and sneak by and keep focused on your goal. I, I guarantee you, just putting those three verses of Proverbs together will give you a great year. You will be filled with so much joy you can't hardly handle it. You will have so much purpose in life you'll be guided through it and you will not be distracted by the bad things that goes on around us. You'll be able to walk down the street whistling a happy tune. You whistle, what was that song, whistle while you work? Mm -hmm. Do that to the annoyance of everyone in the, in, in, at work, <laughs> right? Annoy them by, try to plant earworms. Have you ever tried to do that? Go through singing a little ditty that everyone gets a hold of and it just gets in their mind and they can't get out of it. They're all singing the same song, whatever it is. Happy birthday to you or whatever it is. And, oh man, I got started. I don't know how I even got to that song. The little earworm that just keeps bugging them. They just keep popping up and singing it. Share your earworm with other people. And enjoy life. Have a good year. Have a Good 2022. Don't let anything distract you. Most gracious, my God, thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for each person here and the treasure that they bring to my life and to each other's life. Father, help us to celebrate the life around us, to enjoy the time we have together, to actually be passionate about other people not so wrapped up in ourselves. Nothing is more touching than to see someone who is needy, desiring instead to help others. Nothing is so powerful as kindness and so fulfilling as joy. Thank you, Father, for hearing us today. Thank you for these words of comfort. Let us have a mighty and wonderful 2022. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand up and let's sing this together.
thank you all for being here. And, uh, we just felt this time together. Tuesday night, we will skip the Bible study one more time uh, because, you know, we'll start up after the, in the new year. Have a great week. Do I have anything extra to, introduce, uh, to announce, guys? So we had Samila did tell me that she wanted a Christian service, a Christian service woman to meet next Sunday, the first Sunday in January. Now she's not here, but I'm sorry she still would like to do that. So the Christian service meeting, we have a meeting next Sunday after service. So that would be for the old board or the new board? The previous board, 2021 board. 2021 board, okay. Please. Oh, okay. And 2022, please, too. Yeah, so we only have one other person yeah. to add to that, right? Yeah. So, okay, so plan on that, and uh, anything else? That's good, I think. So let's bow for prayer to dismiss that, and thank you all. Look at this. You're just now, I'm not even having to tell you to clean up around you. You're doing such a good job. Thank you for that. Make sure you throw that away. Make sure you don't throw your money away, but give us a gift to the church, and uh, we'll uh, pray that God bless us all that you give. Thank you so much. Let's bow for prayer. Dan Wartman, would you mind dismissing us today? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this past year. We had trouble in it. Uh, seems like every year we have some trouble. But uh, help us be, uh, think forward to the coming year. May it be a good year. May we grow in Christ and learn more from the Bible. And be with the child. Bless everybody in this country.